Hi guys, my name's Sean Scott from Advanced Electronics and today we're looking at using the AMS fire cell devices and we're going to use the PC configuration software to achieve the correct device states. First thing we need to do is get onto the control panel. Okay, enter commissioning. So we can come across to the tool selection. Tick to enter. Select commissioning. And enter our default 7. 654 password and press the enter. Once we're in commissioning, we have to enter loops and we can use our shortcut so number one will take us to loops or we can use the arrow keys to navigate. Then we need to perform an auto learn on this loop. So this is a single loop panel and it's gone straight into loop one. So we select the auto learn option. And this is going to find any devices connected to the loop of the control panel. Um, this control panel just has the um, AMS fire cell type devices connected. We've got a summary at the end there. The device types were found. If I escape and then select the view edit option. The devices are just coming online so they're still in the reset mode. They'll slowly change to normal. If we scroll to the right here for more information, they're just reporting as the standard XP95 devices. The panel does not know they are the EMS fire cell wireless type devices. And if I scroll down, they're all reporting as normal. Got a couple of device faults, for example. So that may be a battery level or a tamper message. We have a device fault or configuration fail on some other devices. So again, without the panel knowing that they are the AMS fire cell type devices. They can't report the correct device states. So to report the correct device states, we then switch over to the configuration software and we're going to extract the information from the panel to the software tool and update the devices to the correct device types. Using the configuration software, we're now going to take a download of the data from the control panel. So to get the full operation of the AMS fire cell devices, we require to use version 7 configuration software or above and panel firmware 5343 or higher. To take the download, we first select the new file option and then select the communications icon. We achieve communications with the control panel. Select file and transfer from panel to PC. Confirm if it's a standalone panel and we give the site a name. Once the transfer is complete, we select done. Now to achieve the correct functionality of the fire cell devices, we need to change the devices to the correct type. We find this in our site list. We select the loop on which the devices are run. After the auto learn has been performed, the panel will find the devices and will add them in as XP95 type devices. To achieve the correct functionality, we must change these devices to the wireless type devices. We select add remove devices. And in our device selector screen, we select the expander range of devices. We have fire devices and we have ancillary type devices. To change the device type, we simply select the correct device in the device selector and then simply double click on the device we wish to replace. This will replace the currently allocated device. Do you want to continue? And we select yes. And we would continue this procedure for all of the AMS fire cell type devices. If you don't use this feature, then the devices will not report the correct fault conditions.
Once all the correct devices have been added as the expander type devices, we can then use the device details icon to amend the zone text, device text in the normal manner. We would then send this information back into the control panel. We would select the communications icon. The panel would be in PC mode as previously. And we select transfer configuration data from PC to panel. Any errors or issues with the configuration file will be notified within the design check and we can then proceed. Once the upload is complete, the panel will now show the correct operating parameters of the fire cell devices. Okay, and just to finish up on, we have some of the AMS fire cell devices. So for example, the Tama messages from the core points, this core points is not locked in place properly. So we can just fit that back into the correct position. And this core point is the same. Um, one of the devices again was reporting a Tampa message because it's not fitted into its base. So once that's fitted into position, then the, the fault messages are going to clear. Okay guys, so back on the control panel now. We've added the correct devices via the configuration software and uploaded that information into the control panel. So now if we look at the loops option and view and edit the devices, we can now see we've got some correct device state reporting back from the devices with regards to issues. So address 2, for example, is reporting a battery fault rather than the previous device state. Um, if we skip down, got normal. There we have a tamper message from a device rather than, again, just a simply a device fault. We have actual battery faults being reported from devices. Tamper messages being reported from devices. So the device may have been removed for the tamper message to show rather than just a generic device fault message. And if we scroll to the right for the more information, we can see we've got the XP95, but it's also reporting the device signal value as well.